In this video we're going to cover another property of topological spaces, uh, namely compactness, which you have probably seen in the context of metric spaces as something which guarantees you convergent subsequences. Uh, but you may have seen another characterization of compactness, um, which is in purely in terms of open sets, and that's what we're going to use to define compactness for topological spaces. So here's the definition. Uh, topological space X is compact if every open cover, in other words, you know, if you can write a bunch of open sets that cover the whole of X, has a finite subcover. More precisely, if uh, X is some union over some indexing set of open sets, then uh, there's a finite subset of the indexing set such that this still covers the whole of X. So the definition here is motivated by the heine borel theorem that asserts that this notion of compactness is the same as the sequential compactness that you may have seen for metric spaces. But in this, we're just taking this as a definition of compactness for topological spaces. Now, I can't emphasize enough how nice a property this is and how pervasive it is in everyday mathematics. One of the reasons is the following trivial observation that if X is a discrete space, we've already seen discrete topology is one where every open every subset is an open set then x is compact if and only if it's a finite set because imagine if you had an infinite discrete space just going on then you could take an open cover which is just an open set for each element and that has no finite subcover because as soon as you throw away one of these sets, there's nothing containing that point. So it's not a, a cover still. Why is that useful? Well, sometimes you're trying to count the points in a space. And if you're trying to count the points in a space, there better be a finite number of them. Like maybe you're interested in some differential equation. You want to count the solutions of the equation. If you look at the space of the solutions, you give it some topology. You prove that that topology is a discrete topology and compact, and that tells you there's only finitely many solutions. So that's actually how many theorems get proved. Um, so to get a feeling for compactness, I'm going to prove some useful lemmas about compact spaces, and we'll see how the definition gets used in practice. So here is a lemma. X and Y be topological spaces and F be a continuous map. If A is a subset of X which is compact in the subspace topology, then F of A is also compact in the subspace topology. So this is in the subspace topology on A. And this is in the subspace topology on D image. OK, 
okay proof um, we want to prove that f of a is a compact space so let's take an open cover collection of sets you are give us an indexing set be an open cover of f of a in the subspace topology in other words a collection of open sets that cover the whole whole space by definition of the subspace topology there exist vi open sets in y such that uh, ui equals vi intersect f of a and now if we take the pre-images uh, f inverse vi so these are open inside x and if I um, intersect them with a say uh, a intersect f inverse v i as i ranges over i this is now an open cover of a so in that is in the subspace topology and a is compact that means there's a finite subcover. So there's a finite subset of the indexing set such that A is the union of A intersect F inverse VI, where the union is just taken over the I's in this finite set. But then by applying F to this, of a equals well just the union of f a intersect v i for i and j and remember f f a intersect v i was exactly the definition of u i from here. proves it because now we've found a finite subcover of the cover we started with. So the image of a compact space is compact. Okay, another one, another lemma. Um, this is a lemma about closed sets. And I haven't talked much about closed sets, so maybe I should first just tell you what a closed set is. There was an exercise about these, but I may not have done this. Um, so a subset of a topological space um, is closed if its complement is open. This agrees with the usual notion of closed and open sets in, in RN, or in a metric space. Uh, so what does the lemma say? Maybe I'll get a new page. So lemma, a closed subset a of a compact space x is compact. Again, this is in the subspace topology on A. So uh, again, let's let um, UI for I and some indexing set be an open cover of A in the subspace topology. Then by definition of the subspace topology, there exist VIs open in X 
such that uh, ui equals a intersect vi. Now unfortunately the vi's might not cover the whole of x, but there's another open set we can add into the mix such that the vi's together with that open set cover everything, um, and that is the complement of a. So x minus a is open because a is closed and the sets vi cover the whole of x so there's a finite subcover and we can add in right even if that finite subcover misses out the subset x minus a we can add that back in, it doesn't matter. So this, the finite subcover is of the form x minus a union uh, a collection of vi's where i is in some finite set. And now, because that covers the whole of x, if I just take the ui's um, with i J, this covers A, and that's a finite subcover, so A is compact. So I want to finish by giving you some examples of compact spaces, um, and for this I'm going to need to remind you of the heine borel theorem, I'm not going to prove it. So this is the heine borel theorem. This says um, any subspace of Rn, Euclidean space, is compact if and only if it's closed and bounded. As I say, I'm not going to prove this. I'm assuming you've seen something like this in a course on metric spaces. Um, and that tells us that a bunch of spaces that we know and love are compact. So for example, the circle, it has points distance exactly one from the origin. In R2 is compact, the sphere is compact, it's a closed and bounded set, the torus, genus surfaces they're all compact um, what about something that's not compact well R is not compact maybe I should say these are all compact so R is not compact R2, Rn, it's not compact. You know, if I cut out a point from one of these examples, the result is not compact. Maybe it looks something like this. If I pull the point off to infinity, it looks very non-compact. How do you see, for example, R is not compact? Well, you just write down a collection of open sets that has no finite subcover. So, you know, the intervals uh, from an integer minus a little bit up to the next integer plus a little bit. You know, as n varies over the integers, this gives a collection of sets that cover the whole of the real line, but as soon as you drop one of them, you're missing some points. So this has no finite subcover. And you can think of similar proofs for, for these examples. Interestingly, if you wanted to prove the heine borel theorem, notice that by this previous lemma, that a closed subset of a compact space is compact, it's sufficient to prove that a cube 
in our end, the closed cube is compact. Because any bounded set will be contained in some closed cube, and if it's also closed, then it's a closed subset of a compact set, therefore it's compact. And if you want to prove that a cube is compact, all right, a cube is something of the form 0, 1 times 0, 1 times 0, 1, it's a number of times. So it's a product of intervals. So you might think, okay, I should just prove the interval is compact and prove that products of compact spaces are compact. This is true. This is uh, some weak that you can. This is basically equivalent to proving Heine-Borel theorem, and this is something called Tikhonov's theorem. Uh, I'm not going to prove it here. Okay, that's everything I wanted to say about compactness. So the next video will be about another property called Hausdorffness.